Hey everybody, this is Metal Music Man. And I am Professor Lex. And welcome to episode 17. Jeez, I forgot. <laughs> I was waiting. I, I knew that you were going to open up with the, the episode the count. And 17 just sounds like such a big number. It sounds like it, it couldn't possibly be a thing. But uh, we are for once, uh, or, or rather once again, yeah. Uh, we are doing this in person. I am looking at your face, Wait, not staring the into screen. each other's eyes, yes. like just like old it's, times. It's awkward. I must break contact immediately. Yeah. Um. But the, um. Yeah. So it's been uh 15 of the last 17 episodes. So we did the first two in person, which was the plan the whole time. Yeah, we were just going to keep meeting up, and then uh COVID. And then, COVID. There was, then there was a plague. There was a there. And, well, and, there and, still and is there a plague. Evidently yeah. Is still. A we're, plague. we're fixing to have uh, the the re- redux, the remix of the oh, the God. plague, and then I'm going to have to go back to my bunker, and then we're going to do another 16 episodes. Part from, two strikes you know. back. The sequel. Yep. God. Boogaloo. Yeah, my uh, my parents actually, my mom messaged me recently, um, and she she confirmed that they were not going to participate in the giant family Fourth of July thing. Good for her. I, yeah, I was like, yeah, good good for you. That is that is that's a good thing. Yeah, but it <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's just kind of weird. Like, uh, I've got my uh, we'll do little mi- minor butt updates. I've got like my weird e date thing that I'm gonna do tonight, and mm-hmm. I was gonna. I was suggesting initially, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe we should meet up and do like a socially distanced thing, which, you know, yeah. and try and be. And then I was like, oh, wait, it's the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not like you could go to a there is the no responsible, hookup anyway. Yeah. yeah, there is no responsible social distancing on the 4th, on of, the 4th July. of July. No. But, you know, in cooler news, uh, I do have uh, an excellent porch that looks out on the river where all the fireworks. Oh, shit. Explode, so which, you, you guys are going to. that? that oh, no, I'm not meeting oh. up with her. So I, you're going. But to I'll look the at porch. them and then I'll and then I'll say, hey, these fireworks are great. Wouldn't it be cool if there wasn't a plague? The, big you're going <laughs> to. You're gonna do the uh, the the live description for for the the heart of seeing. Yeah, there are uh, colorful explosions. My cat is very afraid. Send send a text. Send <laughs> so yeah so um yeah we're gonna watch the movie Hocus Pocus. Hell yeah! Because What's that the, came up in conversation somehow. Is, that's not Sarah Jessica Parker. Who's who's that the is? blonde? Yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker's the blonde. Yeah, everyone's got a crush on her. Oh, I didn't even know it was her until like because it doesn't look like years. Her. Li- I think yeah. she's got like a fake nose or some kind of prosthetic. Maybe I yeah. There's some kind of weird because yeah, it does some not, witchy woman. It does not look vibe. like her. No. Yeah, maybe it's like a contact. I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen the movie in over a decade. Probably I saw it last Halloween. Oh wow! Is it still fun and funny? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's kind of I mean, weird. Good. Yeah. There's a drinking game that you guys should definitely play. Oh shit. Uh, where every time, because uh, yeah, I don't uh, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Hocus Pocus. Uh, in the lore of uh, Hocus Pocus, these three witches that have come back to terrorize the town have been sealed away by magic or whatever for centuries. Yes. And so the the head witch, who's played by a Bet Midler, Bet Midler. Um, she speaks in anachronisms. She and and I don't mean like she says ye olde or whatever. I mean like she she makes like pop culture references, which she couldn't because she's been in Iraq for eons. So like every <laughs> time she says some wild shit or talks about a song or a pop culture reference that there's no way she would know, <laughs> take a drink and you'll be enjoying your time. <laughs> okay, I'll, I will keep that in mind. I might steal that. That sounds fun. Um but yeah, that movie's super fun. Um, the third witch is Kathy Najimy. Kathy Najimy. I forget how to say her last name. Uh, it's it's that I other think witch. I think it's Najimy. Um, she's she's super funny. She was in like uh, she was John Lovett's wife in Rat Race, and then like a million oh other, yeah, yeah. other different things. Um, so yeah, she's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that I don't know. I just remember that movie being super fun. And then uh, while we're on fun. weird hocus pocus lore, mm-hmm. um, uh, Billy the zombie mm-hmm. is uh, Doug Gushnarful Snarful. I forget his last name. Oh, Gushnarful Snarful. But he yeah, Doug funny. something. Doug funny. That's no, his, name. his first name's Doug. His last name is Marine. and he is an actor who does lots of uh, bodysuit uh, like mo-cap work type and for or? mocap. And so he is the guy who was. Every single monster in Pan's Labyrinth, um, the fish guy in Hellboy. That's um, him. Yep, that is the same. Yep. Oh shit! That is that guy. Okay, I, the, you're talking about the guy who's the gentleman in Buffy, season four. Yeah, of the he's episode, in one of the Hush. Hush episodes, right? There's only the or, one. Or the Hush episode. Excuse it's me. called Hush. Yeah, yeah, let me look up his name here. Hang on. Um, Doug Bibishkarkishkmishmirfnimir. What is his last name? Let's see. Maybe that's why I couldn't. It, he doesn't strike me as a Doug. Uh, what is your name? Doug Jones. <laughs> Doug Jones plays Billy Butcherson in that. Billy Butcherson. Yeah. Yep. Zombie Billy. So anyway, yeah, that dude has been doing. He's like the Andy Circus that people don't know exists before mm-hmm. Andy Circus existed. 
yeah, he, he's done so many different things. Um, so anyway, yeah, Hocus Pocus is a cool movie. Um, so that's that's my plans for later tonight at Hell some yeah. point after maybe we we play some games after we record yeah, we'll, this Yeah, we'll get a couple of games. It is, so, we might as well, we, since we're breaking uh, uh, social distancing code, yeah. we might as well sneak a few video games might in. Might as well get some yeah. games in. Yeah, it's necessary. <laughs> So, um, the topic for today. Yeah, as, as you all know, since it's last week, uh, <laughs> as of last week, we, we did the cancellation roundup and we, we managed to find all of the highest defenders in the fighting game community, including like Filipino champ and uh, Chris G, who said some tactless things. And as we all know, those are high crimes. That's treason. That's, that is the pinnacle of bad stuff that could ever happen in the, oh, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm getting a text message from, from the fighting game. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, we, we had thought, you know, we kind of covered it all because there was some stuff going on last week. And yeah, it was, you know, people saying questionable things about watermelons or uh, that, dressing up in potential blackface or maybe yeah. honoring a hero. Yeah. <laughs> you know, depending on your perspective. Perspective. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, this entire last week has been <laughs> insane. Um, it started with the, uh, I guess Mike allegations C. of, um, well, there was a lot of little stuff coming out that was kind of bubbling to a head, but it seemed like, you yeah. know, who knows? And then the, the one that just kind of set everything off was, um, pu- puppy, puppy. Pu- I don't know. Puppy, I don't know pu- puppy. Puppy. I'm going to say puppy, but I don't actually know. I'm going to assume it's puppy, but he's a, a really good, I think, Pokemon trainer player yes. in the smash ultimate community. And he's, I don't know how old he is now. He's like 17 or 18 or 19. Not or that old. So pretty young. And he came out that, uh, with a tweet that said that Sinpai or Cinnamon something or another, I forget her last name, who is one of the more known quote unquote influencers in the Smash Ultimate community. Um, certainly one of the more recognizable she did, uh, commentators. She did top eight at Evo. She did last top year. eight at Evo for Smash Ultimate, along with lots of other things. Um, apparently, like, groomed and sexually assaulted him when he was 14. Yeah. And. Yes, yeah, so I'll just pause for a minute for anybody who's listening. I probably should have given people a warning. Yeah, you, you want your, your trigger warnings up yeah, front? That's too totally late. fair. Yeah, too late. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's what this episode's We're, about. Sexual um, assault, uh, uh, children. Um, yeah. 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 So it's only going to get worse from this point on. So if you don't want to listen to that, you guys can. We respect it. Yeah. You could you could come to the end. Maybe we'll talk about week. butts again. I, I had a pizza that was very exciting. We'll talk about that next yeah. time. But, but there, so <laughs> it, it feels wrong to just have left off uh, our cancellation roundup last week. Uh, being like, man, the, the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low is uh, F champ for tweeting about watermelons. Yeah, we really didn't want to do this. No podcast. No. But then it was just like in light of. This Recent entire events. week, there's just literally nothing else we could talk about. It would be so, a disservice. So at any rate, um, moving on with this, um, Puppet is, or was, like I said, 14, and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> um, I don't know, whatever you think about what age people should be, and whatever you think yeah. the acceptable age gap is based on the relative age gap. Um, know that at the time Sinpai was 24 and Papa was 14 and Papa did not look like he was 14. He or 15, looked like a child, a proper or, or child. Or even 12. Yeah. Papa looked like he was about eight years old. Yeah. At the time of this. And, um, I don't know that we need to go into everything that occurred, but, there's some pretty sure. bad stuff, and uh, you know you can find uh, his his tweet uh, the twit longer that, that talks about these things if you really want to dig into that. But it was pretty heinous, and um, that just set off a whole chain reaction of all kinds of other people coming forward, which yeah is a good thing. Um, but unfortunately, and something that we've seen happen since this came out. And even even as recently as today, I've had to deal with this in terms of um, moderating it and some of the local the local chats, which we'll get to more of that in a minute. Um, but there are a lot of people because, you know, Sinpai is it's the whole usual double standard of bullshit yeah. where because Sinpai is a woman and she's an attractive woman that there are all these people who are just like, I don't understand the problem. The dude should you, be good. You got he should some be happy. Five, he got some guy. from the hot blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I can't believe that it's it's 2020 and i mean i get it i mean i've had plenty of experiences with toxic masculinity my entire life uh before i even knew 
what that was. Or before, I'm old enough, that wasn't even a phrase. It wasn't a word, yeah. It, it's kind of like when when people talk about, like there's some Reddit post that's one of my, my favorite uh, that I saved that I, I don't think I could find it, but it was some old guy talking to a bunch of younger people in a thread about like slang. And mm. this old guy was like, you know, I'm 60, and my favorite word that I never had was hater is hater because he's like when i was a kid that word didn't exist and so there'd be these people and they'd be hating on you but all you could say is that they're jealous but that wasn't really accurate <laughs> that, you know that wasn't I mean? the full they were word, just yeah. they were there were a bunch of damned haters and i couldn't say it so like so anyway yeah when i was a kid like toxic masculinity literally wasn't a phrase it, it was wasn't just, a th- i mean it was a thing it was, it was a thing it wasn't a phrase but no one could say the word it wasn't a yeah. phrase or if it was nobody knew about it at least of all me but um so yeah, I've been through plenty of that, and I would just expect not to not to say that everything is gone. I'm not that naive, or you know, that we're past it. Yeah. But I, God, I would think, you know, not that the whole world, but I would think that something hitting this close to home in the community, that there would not be people saying that. But yes. th- there are, and um, like I said, I've had to, I've 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 actually had a couple of them even within our own immediate community, people that I would expect to know better. That say stuff being like as that. that it is 2020 and we tend to talk to adults where we can in the community but it's like yeah i mean there, there's age. nothing good about sexual abuse yeah no it, there is no instance of of someone who is 14 or 15 having any kind of sexual anything they've with got someone laws for that who's 30 yeah. ish or whatever there is just no instance of that that's like yeah good for you um, the the issue is that it it seems to me, and please by by all means help me to to understand it. It seems that there are just two ways that this relationship, this pattern of grooming, this series of sexual assault could could be based on. There's one that she's just into young children, which is the pedophile route, and then the other is that she wanted she couldn't get this kind of a, a relationship, this this particular. A uh, pattern of of dominance of of being able to have that much power over somebody in someone her own age, which is, you know, horrible. My understanding of it is that it is it's it's neither and both. Okay. Um, from what I've seen, because there have been a lot of other people who have come out and said stuff that mm-hmm. she's done to them or to people that they know, people who have been in relationships with her, um, at least two or three of those, and it it seems to be that. From from everything I can glean, obviously I've never met this person mm-hmm. in person, but um, it seems to be just a repeated abusive power dynamic, and and just a person who cannot who cannot get enough of that of that dynamic. Yeah. Um, multiple stories of her being with people and you know cheating on them, which infidelity is not even on the spectrum. So yeah, but but, know, but it like is it is a on, piece but... of the power dynamic puzzle. Yeah. Um, you know, using sex as leverage, um, nar- narcissism. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't be an expert on this person because like I said, I don't know this person and I have no direct experience with these events. So this is clearly all speculation, but from what I've seen of the many posts that have come out since Pup is an initial post, um, this is, I mean, a, literally a pedophile by definition of the acts, but I don't know that I would categorically say it's entirely, that's entirely it. I think it's more of an example of abusive power, Power. narcissism and no distinction of how, of how that fix is achieved, whether it's, whether it's a, a, a child or a, or another adult or whatever. It's literally just a person who has some, need to hold this over others and and control them in that way yeah be- and and unfortunately a, a, a minor was scooped up into that whirlwind of insanity because this person you know was they're particularly vulnerable minors are particularly yeah. vulnerable to that kind of exploitation and I, I so that's that's the gross that's yep and and i think we're, we're we'll jump into before we i mean there are other things that we'll bring up from other Community yeah. members, because this is this is a huge rampant. Yeah, because who fucking knew? But <laughs> well, uh, man, yeah, there, there's a lot. I mean, there's lots to unpack here, guys. So first of all, yeah, it's a big rampant thing. There have been several people, which we'll get to in addition to this 
in addition to this woman um, and this instance um, this week, it just a, a chain reaction, uh, which again is a good thing that this is being exposed. We're, um, yeah, we're shining a light on it and the cockroaches are scattering and that's gross. This is good. But I mean, this is like Catholic church levels of, yeah. you know, 90s Catholic church levels of holy shit, what is going on here? Um, you know, not, maybe not, not per se, of the cover up. Be, yeah. Although there are multiple people who are involved um, in other allegations that do form a sort of circle that does, you know, it, it's not that degree. You know, there is no Pope who's excusing <laughs> things per se, but there Thank certainly God. is a, a uh, clicky yeah. group of, of people in, 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 in areas. And, um, and anyway, um, one of the things that's kind of like coming out with all of this too is that is, is this idea that the, you know, the smash community or the fighting game community, because there have been, not as many this week in the fighting game community, but more. There's been um, some. So the key yeah. one that we'll mention that we, well, I guess I'll give some quick backstory is, is Mr. Wizard, who is one of the three main people of Evo and was the CEO of the Evo, Evo tournament company, series, basically. Yeah. Um, Evo being the biggest fighting game tournament in the world and that it's held in Vegas every year. I've been to seven or eight of them myself. It's a wonderful, awesome, cool I've been event. one. It's like going to Mecca. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. talked about that on our tournament memories um, podcast. Um, so Mr. Wizard uh, or Joey Joey Queller? Queller, QLR, I don't know how you say it. Um, he has long been accused of being just like a general weird scumbag by lots of people in the community, but nothing's ever really stuck. It's, yeah, it's, it's mostly been like people call him like, uh, say he's working for McRibs or or just like tiny petty jabs or saying that he's, he's uh, a jerk. Or... He's generally an asshole, but there's also been stuff like Mike Watson has called him out several years ago even, uh, yeah. which is something that resurfaced recently about doing some of the things that it turns out he was accused of and has basically admitted to um, even three or four years ago. Um, but again, it's hard to, I don't know, there's no yeah. victims had not come out and it, it's hard. It's hard to make those things stick when it's just hearsay. So a victim did come out um, who is an older, I think he's 20 something now guy. This is stuff that happened in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. which would have made Mr. Wizard at that time, who's 40-ish or something now. Um, 20, 30 years old. Uh, he was, I think, 25 or so, if memory serves. Old enough to know better. Um, but basically, there's a lot of stories of this guy. Um, they all hung out at an arcade. That was kind of where the um, you know, the fighting game stuff happened back then. And there are instances of this guy like offering some of the younger kids who came around uh, tokens for the arcade to do weird shit like take off their clothes and get in a swimming pool in their underwear for 10 minutes. Yeah. And it was always like young boys or whatever. And so this person who came out saying this was like, here are some things that happened with me. And again, I'm not going to go into all because the specifics we don't need of that. To. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can, you know, again, you can, you can Read find it at your leisure. You can find that it's very available on Twitter and the internet now, but the, the gist of it being that he like met up with Mr. Wizard and things transpired and he never really thought about, I guess, in the context of, you know, being in his own words, I think a dumb kid. Yeah. Uh, what this really meant. And the, um, the transaction itself was sort of couched in like that, that exploitation of someone young and naive as well as a, a degree of toxic masculinity. Uh, well, there, there's that yeah. in, masked in the, the, you know, he had meant, kind of mentioned how there were things like dumb things like, hey, I dare you to eat this entire bottle of ketchup and I'll give you twenty dollars. Yeah. Stuff like that. He he had said that was kind of like the culture they were in, which is in and of itself an example of stupid, toxic, masculine stuff. Um, but that's inoffensive, toxic masculinity where you eat a bottle of ketchup as compared to exactly. sexual but, exploitation but the, of the a minor. Point, the point, though, was yeah. that it it. It was hard to differentiate. There was so much of that going on. He that didn't it, differentiate. He didn't. And he couldn't. couldn't. That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, this guy, um, Mr. Wizard, um, has since been, you know, removed and severed ties from the Evo organization. Yep. Uh, Tom and Tony Cannon. Uh, one of them is the CEO now. They're brothers. Um, Tom, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure which, but. Why do you have um, two names that's similar? Anyway. They, um, and so they announced that they were severing ties and moving on, but they also canceled Evo Online, which Evo itself was, was basically canceled because, because, of COVID. Of, because of COVID. There's nothing you can do there. And so then, yeah, <laughs> so then they changed it to Evo Online and all of the companies finding this out about Mr. Wizard before Evo made Evo its was, announcement yeah. were pulling out. So N uh, Nintendo and Capcom and, sorry? Main Six, the Them's Fight and Herds developer said, we, essentially, we don't want our tournament or we don't want our game associated with the tournament run by pedophiles. And yeah. can you blame them? 
No, you can't blame <laughs> them. And that's what, yeah, the Nether Realms, which is Mortal Kombat, every every company Killer did Instinct. this. Yeah. And then Evo was finally just like, <laughs> yeah, no, no okay, Evo Online this year. We're canceling the entire tournament because we we can't play any games. <laughs> so Evo Online is totally canceled. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, you know the the Cannon Brothers can recover. Um. I oh man, I hate to participate in negative, <laughs> potentially accusatory speculation. Uh huh. But I would be remiss if I didn't bring up that as much as everyone loves the Cannon Brothers and as much good as they have done for the community, there are a lot of questions about their culpability in this because they have worked very closely with Mr. Wizard for so long. For years and, and years and years. And e- even. And we just ran through this with with Method in World of Warcraft, which we didn't talk about as much in the last podcast. It was the tail end of our cancellation roundup. But yeah. if you guys play World of Warcraft, you'll know that about two or so weeks ago, this exact kind of thing to this almost this exact same degree just happened in the World of Warcraft community. There's a guild named Method who had all of the, the world first raid kills recently. They're a huge reason why... Um, Mythic Raiding has like a stream following. It was something that the WoW community followed, but it really wasn't streamed. WoW is kind of an old game. People didn't really give a shit about it. They started streaming it two years ago. They've become this huge force. They make add-ons for the game that everyone uses that are called like method tools. They have numerous content creators and tournament PvP and tournament Mythic Dungeon and tournament raiding players and teams that they sponsor. Their hands are in everything. This is the equivalent of, you know, Evil Geniuses or Cloud9 or Liquid right. in, in any other game. Um, they were exposed in a fashion that took a really long time and lots of back and forth to get it out, which is a pattern we've seen in this where they they tell sort of parts of truths and and whatever, but they uh, they were they were basically accused of harboring this guy who is a pedophile and has molested and sexually assaulted multiple, multiple, multiple underage women. There are videos of this guy like pulling out knives and saying weird sexual shit to women on stream when it's just him and the woman in the house that Method paid for the woman to come out to do content co- content collaborations with this guy. Yeah, But, you know, he's a really good healer, so they needed to keep him on the team. Um, and so their initial reaction, and Method is basically dead at this point, which is crazy because, again, like I said, they have their... Yeah, it would be like evil geniuses or, or uh, what's that? They have their fingers in everything. Yeah. I mean, it, in everything. And and they're... But everyone is dropping them. Everyone is leaving. And they had first started with, you know, we didn't know anything about this. We are disgusted that people would insinuate that we did know about this. Of course we are appalled and this is horrible, but how dare you? And then... Immediately upon releasing that statement, multiple people quote tweeting them with instantaneous evidence of the CEO of, of the knowledge. guild, of the CEO's girlfriend who was co CEO or something, of other high ranking members of the guild having not only having had that knowledge, mm-hmm. but having had that knowledge two years right. prior. And just a whirlwind of insanity. And so that, I mean, it's been a crazy several weeks for me, even before this. Yeah. Um, but that stuff coming up and bringing this back to the cannons, uh, maybe they didn't. Because I mean, I hope the, they didn't. I hope they didn't. And here's the thing: <sighs> Ab- abusers are really good at abusing people and hiding That's things. That's how they do the thing. And so you you do have to remember that when you're having these kinds of thoughts. And and, and this yeah. is hopefully I am adequately checking myself right now as <laughs> I bring this topic up because it could be total nonsense. And they may be completely innocent. And they may have been as manipulated as everyone else and not known. But I'll be damned if everyone hasn't been saying stuff about Mr. Wizard just for a really long time. Yeah. Yeah, Cause you hear you hear the jackass bit and you hear the the whatever, and then you also hear like tiny rumblings. And apparently the rumblings weren't tiny rumblings, they were just things that people said quietly or not very frequently. I mean, one of the things, and I guess I'll name this person because they're in the uh the document that was put out about Mr. Wizard, but one of the names that came out that was surprising to me and well this is this is actually great this is an excellent jumping off point is uh viscant was in that Did yeah you see yeah because yeah. he's he's one of the ogs from back so viscant is generally liked by a lot of people you may know him even if you don't know his name or what he looks like you will know him from the low tier god yeah video he, uh you he, may have known this as like you know it's it's some it has some ridiculous type. it's like black jock gets owned by skinny white nerd or some stupid like. 
yeah. stupid clickbait <laughs> title. Um, Lord your God is a toxic, stupid piece of shit. Who we is hate a him. giant, <laughs> hot, muscly man who's one of the worst human beings you could ever possibly well, encounter. He, he was uh, really toxic and hateful. <laughs> oh well, yeah, he's not a pedophile. That's true. Yeah, but but, but, but yeah, definitely. He deserves okay, to be second booted. tier, not yeah. A tier. Yeah, a B tier. <laughs> now, yeah, now that we've now that we've exposed the S tier so horrible there's people, there's S tier bad people yeah, in the FGC. Um, exa- yeah, it's a great point, Lex. A sad one, but a great one. Um, <sighs> So this guy's been a piece of shit known for a long time. He caused a bunch of stir and just was super abusive, borderline physically. Like, he's he's imposing. If nothing yeah. else, if he didn't hit anybody, he, the way if you he look up the to do it, look up the confrontation with uh, Vasant uh, where he and uh, uh, LTG get into it because like he's he's physically towering over uh, yeah. Vasant. Vasant is a little. Uh, he's like a little skinny skinny dude. Yeah, but anyway. So he challenges him in a Street Fighter uh, first to ten, Street Fighter four. Uh, Viscant is uh, an Evo champion, first place for Marvel for 3. Marvel three. Not exactly known for Street Fighter, but this is a dude who has been around since the old days and knows his shit in any game, whether or not he yes. actively participates in it. Uh, Viscant shits on him and then gives an epic pop off, which is why everyone turned it into this super popular video that got hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of views because it is pretty great. You know, it is. Ju- it's justice good porn. justice porn. Yeah, it's great justice porn. So where I'm going to go with this, um, and this is where I have a hard time with some of this, both in terms of the time line of when certain things happened, as well as the relative age of the people who are or aren't being accused of these different things. And this is something that is hard to talk about for some people because there's just a lot of instant bandwagon mob mentality and a lot of it is very very understandable given the accusations allegations and events that have transpired but it's important for me to have um to have a uh an as objective and logical and rational decision about these kinds of things as you can despite how much people will want to react emotionally about the horrible it's really, things that have occurred. It's really easy and understandable to react to this in an emotional manner, yeah. which is why it's so hard for people to talk about it. And so, yes. And so, so this, this in, in this, in this, uh, uh, tell all, I guess that was put out that, that exposed Mr. Wizard is mentioned as saying to the guy who was manipulated by Mr. Wizard into sexually exploited by Mr. Wizard. Yeah. Who was sexually exploited into, by Mr. Wizard. To, yeah, that, uh, that's good. We're good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, into saying something to the effect of like, oh, you didn't know Mr. Wizard, you know, is gay. You just gave him jack off material for a month or something. So there's a whole lot in that, not the least of which is the assumption within that statement that anyone who's gay is a pedophile, which is obviously bullshit. And we're not going to touch yes. on that um, because I, that's obvious. You know, we know that that's not a thing, but this is 1990 something and toxic masculinity as we've been saying. So, but what, that's not what I want to talk about. That's, that's obvious. And I don't think we need to waste any time mm-hmm. other than to say, yeah, that shouldn't obviously be a thing that you assume. Um, what I'm more interested in bringing up at the moment is the issue of how guilty or responsible mm-hmm. this can't can be in that situation and how much did he know yeah and this to me is i think the hardest thing about the whole situation of everyone and this is where i will bring up captain zach and Mm -hmm. ally and nairo in the current stream of things that have occurred in smash ultimate which is that ally is pretty old he's 26 or 28 god um and Nairo is now, I think, 24. Some odd, yeah. So, Captain Zack... God, there's just so much context to give here. <laughs> Captain Zack is now, I think, 17? I think? No, if, he's if got... Nairo's, I think he might be like 19 now. If yeah. Nairo is 24, then Captain Zack would be 19. These are approximate ages. I know the ages of when the things occurred. There's I don't a five-year gap. yeah. So, okay, I think, yeah, I think Captain Zack is 18 or 19 now. That, that sounds right. But, uh, so, Captain Zack is a person who, regardless of all of the sexual allegations that have been coming up, that he is um, involved in, has been a victim of, has also been involved, or the center of other controversies in 
the Smash community for a number of years and has, as of the last year, been banned for, I think, five years. Um, technically for bracket manipulation, which is a thing that he's done. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I'm following. Uh, bracket manipulation meaning, you know, blackmailing people to lose or bribing people or fixing matches, etc. But also has been, again, victimized and... <sighs> and has victimized others. And this is a really hard subject to talk about because all of the instances that I'm about to get into are when this person was a minor. Um, so Ally is the best snake player in the history of the Smash Brothers series. He was the number two player for the majority of Smash Brothers Brawl's lifetime playing Snake, um, second only to Mewtwo King for the majority of the game's lifetime. Um, he's been around for ages. And it came up, shit, two years ago, I think. Sounds about right. At this point, that Ally was in a relationship with Captain Zack. Um, apparently, in the area that Ally lived at the time, and I think Zack lived there as well, but I wouldn't swear to that. I'm a bit fuzzy on the details. But I guess the age of consent there is 16, mm -hmm. and there isn't legally... Anything wrong with that? Both parties, after this came out, um, agreed, and as far as I'm aware, still agree that there was never anything sexual done between them mm -hmm. beyond, I guess, presumably kissing or something. Um, so understandably, this caused a huge rift two years ago or a year and a half ago or whenever it was that this came out. But a big part of that and a big part of the evidence of that are messages, screenshots of Captain Zack holding this information over Ally's head, telling him that if Ally didn't throw, th throw a match or whatever, he was going to expose him, and if he didn't give him money, he was going to expose him, all these different things. It's a very complex issue, and I, don't, I am certain, for me, I can't entirely label... Captain Zack as the victim in this, despite him having been a minor in this situation. Legally, he is a victim in this. Yes. Yes. Not yes. to say that he's the only one who suffered. Sure. Yeah. Um, and the reason that this is relevant now is because from everything that happened with Nairo, who is another prominent figure in the Smash Ultimate community and was fairly prominent towards the end of Brawl, Smash 4 too. Um, huge in Smash 4. Um, I guess when Nairo was 20 and Zack was 15, there was some sexual interaction between them. This was all exposed by Captain Zack. Recently. Who recently, as part of the this, this recent rung in the last week and a half, saying that there were sexual interactions between them, but this is all Captain Zack's own texts th yes. that he shares. And I just have a really hard time with this situation because clearly this should not have happened. Yeah. Clearly Nairo should have known better. But I don't know. Like, a 20-year-old to me being... Basically, the con it's hard to bring this up without giving the exact context of it, which is that Captain Zack is saying he basically super hard came on to Nairo. He was with, the, the aggressor. Captain Zack was the aggressor, literally. Nairo didn't turn him away, which is bad and terrible. And, and you should know better. And should know better. But like, at 20, I have a hard time with that. I'm not saying it's excusable, but sure. I think it's very different than the situation with Senpai. Senpai who it's, knew better and... Yeah. And was the aggressor and she went was, after yeah, the, yeah. someone who was not even remotely sexually mature. That's the power and, dynamic. And yes, the power... Exactly. And so the, the, the messages from Captain Zack are basically him bragging about yes. having done this to Nairo. And this is the same pattern. Uh, I'm going to call it abusive behavior. Uh, minor be damned. I, I don't know. I mean, it is, it is a person who is intentionally using sex as a way to have power over someone. And it's, but it's fucked up too, because how much of that is something that this person would have done on their own? Yeah. And how much of that is something that this person is doing because this person uh, in Captain Zack is a minor who was in an environment with who knows what else going on, 
that caused this kind of I, that yeah because we don't so, know the pathology there we don't know yes. why they they got to that point there is so much to unpack with that yeah. that we we do know and that we don't know and can't know and it i i just think and that's a similar instance with zero who is man just saying mm-hmm. these all in a row yeah it's basically everyone out, who's out big. loud <laughs> This is just it's, it's way more taxing than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, You're not, you, you, this but, uh, is physically draining on you, it appears. Yes. So Zero is the, and I I never liked Zero's personality. I always thought he was obnoxious. I didn't understand sure. why anybody gave a crap about him other than that obviously Except he was that. a good player. he was the best of Smash 4. And even considering that I never gave a shit about him, I still am exhausted and drained. Yeah. You know? Because it's heavy stuff. And so... Zero is again. I don't. I don't personally think anyone is to the degree of of, of what Sinpai was. And and I want. I want to say for anyone who's listening that thinks we shouldn't be in the business of delineating that. Um, I just don't think I can ever agree with that statement. And I, I'll, I'll give a, a brief. You're saying drawing a distinction. Yeah. yeah okay. I, we and we've talked about this. Um, we talked about this last time. Yep. Um, with regard to. Some of the stuff in our the local scene. The stakes were lower, but <laughs> yeah, they were. Jesus, they were. But I, I, that's something that to me is very important. I, I think even if at the end of the day you are, if the if the if the end result is that you're banning these people, there is still a difference. You know, I, this was the analogy I brought it before, but there's a huge difference between somebody who punches someone and someone who murders someone. And most of these people have done far worse than punching someone in that analogy. Yeah. But there is still a difference between mm-hmm. murdering someone and fully assaulting someone or whatever. Even if at the end of the day we're banning them all, I, I think it's important to stay truthful to what happened. Otherwise, you risk you risk that mob mentality of no longer being rational. And it's so hard to continue being rational because the allegations and the events are so heinous. But... It's very important to me, just as a person and my worldview, to hold to those and to be able to analyze what occurred, look at the variables fairly, and come away from it understanding basically what happened. Even if both things are horrible and both things result in someone being yeah, banned Yeah, if they're forever. both cancel-worthy, ban-worthy, whatever. So, it... I, it, I think that's how it needs to be. It's that's still, just how I feel about it. It still informs the degree of possibility for rehabilitation or what measures this person needs to make, whether or not they get back into the community yes. to make amends for the, the wrongs that they've done. And I would yeah. say that there is a longer road for Senpai than there is for Nairo. Yeah, and understand whether that that Nairo road doesn't mean back. there's any chance of coming back. I mean, this is like when people ask the question, why did they give someone f- Four life sentences for a crime. Well, there is a difference between someone getting one life sentence and four. Well, yeah. Even though effectively the person can't serve it, and well. you know we know how time works and how long people live, but there is there is a difference because the the point of that is to highlight the degree of the severity. Because I think that I think that is implicitly valuable. Yeah. To 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 weigh that and understand it as, as to the best of your ability. So, at any rate, um, Zero is a similar instance to Captain Zack, and when I say that, I mean this is someone who evidently was around a group of people, so just real quick, rapid fire, several other top community figures, commentators, one of them being D1, who was one of the biggest Melee and early Smash 4 and Ultimate commentators, who was part of a, basically a commentary duo with a guy named Prog, who thankfully has no allegations Thanks. against him and is not involved in any of this, but his main co-commentator is um, D1 and Kitaro and all these people were people who were basically mentors to Zero. These are people who were kind of on the tail end of Brawl, uh, were involved in the Melee community. Zero being more Smash 4 focused, not coming into Brawl till the end of it. Right. Kind of being quote-unquote raised by these people in the community. And... Again, uh, as far as we're aware, Zero has not, I don't think, physically assaulted anyone. But Mm. there are multiple, um, both accusations, and then Zero, after trying to make several attempts to explain himself, recently just made a post that was, I have to come clean, I'm sorry, these things are all shitty, I did do these things, and what those things are is basically treating 
underage girls uh, in chats uh, with inappropriate sexual innuendo and behavior when he was like 19. Um, and so the reason I wanted to start with Captain Zack and bring this up next is, again, that like Nairo is another scenario where I you should, as a 20-year-old, know better than to mess with a 15-year-old. Yes, but, but what... I, I even think I take issue with the... <laughs> The uh, the instantaneousness that you say that to be perfectly honest with I you get because it. <laughs> because one of the things and this is this is what it's something that's really hard to talk about in in America and without people freaking out but like and I don't I'm not one of those people that's like we should all have age of consent Sex with be children. age of consent be 16 because that's how it is in Canada and blah blah, blah. like I don't mean that but like yeah. ultimately whatever age you define is arbitrary and there are people who are 20 something. Mm -hmm. who are not emotionally ready to consent to that kind of thing. And there are probably people, even though it's not worth, <laughs> it's not worth doing, there are probably people who are much younger than that. There are certainly people who are under 18 who are more mentally able to consent to that kind of thing. It's not, not common. That, yeah. And I want to make sure that I'm being clear that my point is not to say that I think it's a horrible travesty that the age is 18. That's not <laughs> my point. But, but I do think it's important to note that because, you know, You've got kids that are 17 dating kids that are 19, and they call it the Romeo-Juliet clause, whatever. I don't... Yep. The point is, the law is there to make the best possible decision we can make on yes. the most possible amounts of cases, and it should be respected for that reason. It's the, the same reason you know that you can drive 80 miles an hour on a highway. Safely. Safely. Maybe. Without <laughs> issue. But there's a reason that there's a law there for it. And... You know, that's obviously a less, you know, the stakes are lower. held thing. <laughs> the stakes are lower, yeah, yeah. et cetera. But like, at, at a certain point, you just have to make an arbitrary call. Yeah. It's the same way with, you know, why can you join the military at 18, but, but you, you can't, can't drink, drink until you're 21. 21. Yeah. Well, that is actually really stupid, and I do feel very strongly that one of those should fit the other. I don't actually care yeah. which it is. Which one, as long as it's either even. either be twenty one to join the military Nerf or let the military or drink buff at eighteen. Drinking. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care which. I do actually feel really strongly about that one. But that's an excellent example of like you but, you just yeah. pick you have to pick an arbitrary date because there is no way to guarantee each situation. So with zero being nineteen and being around when he was I don't know sixteen or whatever age he was around all these other people who are older than him who who have. I'm sure they themselves at some point been failed by other adults or by other community members to get to the point that they're at perpetuating a cycle of abhorrent behavior. How much of a chance does someone like that who, and again, I've never liked zero, but someone who evidently doesn't have a lot of parental figures in their life, um, who really only has this game in this community as, mm -hmm. as a thing who comes in when they're 16 and changes countries to come to America Yeah, is surrounded by these horrible people. I, I, it, I'm not, again, the point is not that this person should be allowed back into the community. They shouldn't, but <laughs> there is a difference between again, that person yes. and that situation and someone who's grooming children it's, to exploit the it's power. It's not an life. insane leap to think that a person in that environment at the age of 19, which is really not that old. I think there's a lot of people here who are in this community who are 25, and it's like, man, I don't know. I, I'm i 34. I guess I'm just old, but like looking back on myself at 21 or 22, you, you do not instantly become a stable adult who can make no. rational decisions <laughs> the second you turn 18. Despite the fact and that And that's kind of my problem yeah. with some of those, you know, it is hard. Um, and I... I don't think these people should be excused, but it's it's part of the issue of looking at this whole thing, and especially someone like Captain Zach, who did some of the things that he did. I don't know. I I can't not have a a degree. You must understand of, of at some point yeah. for some of those people, and I don't think that. I'm not saying Nairo was the victim, right? Sure. Nairo paid Captain Zach to be mm -hmm. quiet. He paid other people to be quiet. He used community money to fund these things. He lied repeatedly about it. Um, did, you know, and, and who knows what else based on those yeah, lies. But because that's just what we know. But, but I have a problem with the idea that 
every single situation is black and white. Sure. Puppy Senpai is black and fucking white. It's pretty clear and evident from, that, that's from a, the ninety nine point nine 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 nine. I mean, I, I don't say anything's a hundred zero. I just sure. don't. But that's a ninety nine point nine 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 fucking repeating. Senpai is just a piece of shit. So I don't know, and I think it's important, even if, like I said, it doesn't change to to recognize that because a part of coming out of this and making the community better and a safer place for people is trying to fix people becoming a zero yeah to, to by giving those people the proper the, the proper uh, mentorship or or guidance when they're younger so mm -hmm. that these things don't happen again yeah Something and I, I think you need i think it. you need that acknowledgement to prevent that because, because it saying, provides a sense of scale. It provides a sense of scale, but also a sense of why, which helps you correct it. You yeah. can't know how to fix a problem if you don't know why it occurred. Why it was there is no, there is no fixing, in my opinion, someone like Senpai. There mm -hmm. is only creating safe space to prevent that person. But I think if you only try to shut out that kind of a predator, yeah, you won't succeed in keeping out situations like Zero and Nairo. In creating a safe space, a, 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 that, a that, habitable environment. I, I think it's, it's a different, yeah. That, yeah. One is a situation of a, of a full-on predator. The other is a situation of someone who exhibits predatory behavior as a, I guess, a learned social custom from a toxic environment. Sure. Um, and it's it's just as important to keep out the extremely toxic super pieces of shit as it is to try to educate anyone who's impressionable to keep them from becoming that. I mean, we're getting to... Yeah. This is just like... It's like the prison system in America, man. You can't just throw everyone in jail mm -hmm. and let them rot forever. And not expect that to come back and bite you in the ass and cause more repercussions. At a certain point, you do need to think about how to rehabilitate educate people. Well, rehabilitation, A, but that's not even... Uh, yes, but that wasn't yeah. even my main point. My main point is preventative education. Okay. You know? Um, because I think the hardest rationalization about all of this that I think a lot of people have a lot of trouble coming to terms to and why why I get so frustrated seeing the constant black and white of this is that literally anyone could become a zero with yeah. the right variables. Well, if you, and that's because the environment don't, they don't want to admit. And even saying that a lot of times people will immediately backlash and, 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 and jump and jump at that and just, it's a, it's an emotionally but, but, but charged it, situation. It is. Yeah. But, but anyone can become that with the right, mm -hmm horrible situation and that is i just think denying that and trying to pretend mm -hmm. like all it is is a person who is a piece of shit was always a piece of shit is not only detrimental to the issue of understanding what happened it's it it encourages it almost to happen again because it's like you're putting on earmuffs and ignoring a problem. Yeah, and you can do that and, and be mad when problems still happen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if I may uh, Woo, point out, yeah. Give me, give me, give me a sip. I got you. Was, yeah. I, you, I actually, you go ahead. I actually finished. A, <laughs> you had that, the whole thought. <laughs> that whole thought process. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I may go back uh, a couple of steps ago, you said that you had uh, a certain degree of issue with the immediacy to which I said uh, that he should have sure. known better at 19 when the age of consent or whatever Romeo and Juliet protection would have only covered him up to 18. Uh, I understand that this is a logical fallacy that extends specifically to an appeal to authority. But what I mean is if you're on the highway and you're driving 80 and the speed limit is 75 and you didn't hurt anybody, you didn't lose control of the car, uh, but the police pulled you over and said you were doing 80 and a 75, you knew that you were breaking the law probably, or at least in this hypothetical. And maybe you weren't doing anything particularly wrong insofar as your understanding of the situation goes, and maybe you were as clear as you could or as close as you could get to to adhering to the law while still breaking it. Um, you, you knew, you knew 
your age and their age, you knew the speed limit, you knew how fast you were going. And it's not as cut and dry as just looking at two numbers, comparing, contrasting, getting the sum, and then saying, well, you're evil. And and I think that's what you're saying, the differences between zero and a senpai. And I think to sort of transition into our, our rising action here, our call to action, um, it's interesting to me that you said that zero maybe was without proper uh, guidance and he had the game and these people around him who fostered a hostile environment or an environment that was more likely to create this kind of a scenario and situation where he was potentially exhibiting or beginning to exhibit predatory behaviors. Mm -hmm. Um, We play fighting games, whether it's Smash or Street Fighter or Marvel or whatever. And at the end of the day, we all want to just grill, right? We all want to just be able to sit and play our games. That's what that's what we wanted to do in the first place, is sit and play these video games, because that's what's fun to us. But we have an ethical responsibility, I, I think you agree, uh, at this point in our lives, and our career, as uh, uh, participants in this community. I, I think that we have an ethical responsibility to create a better environment than the one that we lived through. Mm. I, I don't know if that's just your your typical. Boy I Scout already shit. would agree with that without any of this yeah. happening, based purely on the toxicity of the local St. Louis Street Fighter Four community. Yes, yeah, this was fucked up. I loved it, but like, yeah, <laughs> I would agree with that anyway. Yeah. even without the light of the current events, and particularly in light of current events, you and I and everyone else has has an ethical responsibility to make sure that situations like this not just won't happen, but can't. Like we 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 should be doing as best as we are able to where we can, and, and I I feel like that's why we're so quick to hand out these bans to all of these people like your senpais like your whoever, uh, is is to try and create an environment where that won't happen again because at the end of the day kids deserve to be able to play fighting games without having to worry about fucking sexual predators. I agree with that sentiment entirely, um, but I think. Ensuring it can't is, is impossible. as impossible as playing the game perfectly. Yeah, it is. You strive I accept to, that. yeah, y- you strive for the impossibility, knowing that you'll never achieve it, and it's the same thing. Y- you can't prevent it. It isn't. It isn't our community. It's everywhere. It's schools. Yeah, it's yeah. churches. It's families. It happens to be being exposed right now in our community, where we were naive enough, you know, to think that it wasn't a thing, or you know, to but pretend it, like it, it is. It is everywhere. There. Yeah. Um, and you, you can't, you, you, you just can't, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try, try for that unattainable perfection. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess before we end here, I should also bring up that we did finally have one of these instances hit close to home yesterday, today, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Um, I didn't think this was going to be a thing at all. And so, yeah, if I'm, if I've been extra stressed out from this podcast, um, this is part of the reason why. Um, so I joined the Smash community, I guess, again, after I was in the Brawl community for a million years. I left for Smash 4 because I didn't like the game and came back for Ultimate and came back to a community that surprisingly was more built up and far less toxic than the Street far Fighter less toxic community. Than than the Street Fighter community and, you know, these new kids in the. The ultimate era have done a great job. Um, I have since been, you know, put on the, I guess, the committee, so to speak, Council of St. Louis. Yeah, um, as like you know, as a, as a member, um, I'm happy to support it. But I'm also just really, and I have been even before now, uh, impressed with the way this this new generation has handled this community. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, Jay Swiss, who is a member. Of the St. Louis Smash community, um, has been since Smash 4. Uh, someone who I've played in bracket numerous times, who was a moderator on the Discord. And prior to me being added to the Council committee, council for St. Louis Smash, um, was the person who was in my place. He left for reasons that weren't really specified um, a couple months back, uh, which is why there was a role for me to fill, and I was happy to step in and fill it when I was asked to. Um, <clears throat> apparently has been under investigation from the FBI for FBI possession investigation for possession of, of child, child pornography. pornography. Um, so we had to make a, an announcement about that, uh, in the discord. 
Um, on Facebook, on Twitter. On Facebook, everywhere, on Twitter. Uh, yesterday, um, this is something that's technically, you know, still an allegation, um, but we were alerted to this from a third party that um, will remain anonymous um, via our tournament form. And, um, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I didn't know the guy super well. I definitely have played him several times. Um, I wouldn't even say we were friends. But it is someone who, yeah, was at, like, the majority of our tournaments. Amicable. Um, was, from my understanding, a pretty large community figure in this Match 4 era. Was a, a pr member, meaning, you know, he's one of the better players. And um, in light of kind of everything I've set up to this point, it is another one of those issues that I think the hardest part of, like, dealing with it for me as a committee member was dealing with the, um, kind of like some of the more... Emotionally charged. Emotionally charged, yeah, mob mentality stuff that occurred, which is all very understandable based on what came to light. Um, but, you know, J-Swiss did things, uh, not for me, but I know there are members of the community that he helped in ways that, um, you know, I don't want to get into the specifics sure. of, but there were definitely things that he had people have said that positive impacts. he had some very positive impacts on people. But also this, yeah. and that's kind of my been my point this whole time with all this stuff is like, I think it's a disservice to the issue to pretend, you know, I mean, it's black and white in terms of should he be banned. There was no question. We immediately, Absolutely. we have that ethical, we have to ban him for the safety of the community. Um, we have to act as quickly as we can, which we did. In light um, of evidence. Otherwise we'd be guilty of covering it up. Yeah. And there's no question about that, but it's it. I think that's the, been the biggest emotional toll for me on dealing with this is trying to navigate or balance out the people who are just, and rightfully so, but who are just nothing but angry and losing their minds about this with the people who knew some of these people and had positive experiences with them to, to and negotiate seeing them and have to, that cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Seeing them have to deal with this, um, even though it isn't someone that I was close to is, um, is pretty taxing. Yeah. Cause um, it's, it's painful to have to try and reconcile, uh, you know, something horrible with something nice. You, it, it's hard to hold both of those ideas in your head at the same time. Usually impossible. For, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little selfish while we're dumping all of this and, and just say for me how it is. Cause for, I think that's why it is so hard for me because it isn't hard for me to do that. And, and, and I've, I've never understood why it's hard. Like it's very easy for me. It's easy for me to be like, this guy did this thing stupid here, but also this good thing here. They're all just separate instances and I'll weigh them accordingly based on what I think, mm -hmm. you know, about the person. And I have no problem with, and I instantly said when we were discussing it, I was like, yeah, we, we need, if, if this is what was said and this is what we know, we need to ban him and we need to do it Damn. now and we can't yeah. wait. I have no problem making that call, but mm -hmm. I also have no problem understanding that this person did have positive relations with other people. Positive and healthy relations with other people. I, th th that, that. That is, and I think people think I'm weird, or I don't know, but I, I have no problem with that. That That is not... Yeah. That doesn't raise any that's flags. That's just how I you am. It's how my brain works. I yeah. just look at the things and I can see them. But, but what is hard is trying to get other people to understand that and having to kind of let let the fire rage for a time and burn itself out while I'm looking at these, while I'm looking at other people who are, are also hurting that, that yeah. are, are being uh, scorched by this fire per se. Mm -hmm. That is harder. Um, but at any rate, it's been a hell of a couple weeks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and this is, <laughs> this is the podcast this week, guys. So sorry, we couldn't talk about, uh, fun stuff. Yeah. It just feels irresponsible not to yeah. talk about this. So we'll be back. Yep. Talking about like we'll talk about butts and video butts games. Butts and 
pizza and next week. <laughs> All right, we're signing off. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Yeah. This is depressing, but uh, I've been Metal Music Man. And I've been Professor Lex. We will see you guys next time. Bye.